Hello, I'm Chanel, this is Spirited Stardust, and today we are looking at the decks that I worked with this week. So we'll start with the tarot. This week I chose to work with the, I'm about to drop all the cards because they're super slippery, um, the Dream Keepers Tarot. So I'll show you, these are the backs, I edged mine in the same colour. So I decided to work with this card, this deck this week, because I recently um, filmed this deck for my Got It For The Guidebook video, where I um, showcased decks that I got purely based on their guidebooks. And I was reminded by how much I love the guidebook of this deck. Um, so I thought I haven't played with it for quite a long time. So it deserves some time uh, in action. So I have enjoyed it. I still love this deck, even though, like I said, I didn't, I wasn't drawn to it in the beginning for its aesthetics at all, but um, it reads really well for me. And I like the voice, its voice, but you know, from its um, guidebook, I always find like guidebooks like give a voice to a deck. So I like how it communicates. It, the artwork's actually grown on me as I've used it. Um, and yeah, I, I've had a lot of fun and it's definitely, definitely staying in my collection. I'll do a little spread at the end where I'll read it out so you can see how these, all these decks uh, played together. The next deck that I worked with this week is the Deep Place Oracle. So this week I did um, one tarot deck with three oracles. This one's got the gilding um, and the matte card stock, which I like. It's that scratchy matte. This is beautiful. So I, I haven't given this deck enough love. I got it right at the beginning of my tarot acquisition phase, which I'm slowly slowing down with now. I only got into tarot um, pretty much just a few months ago. So it's very early days for me. So it's, you know, purchasing all, all my decks. And as it is, sometimes all of the decks, even though you've ordered them spaced apart, they all come at once. And this was the case with this one. It came with a whole bunch and I didn't have a system back then on doing deck interviews, on making sure that, you know, I worked with the deck. I just sort of played with it, put it away. Um, so I'm good, as you know, by now, I'm going through my entire collection. I'm like curating it. I'm working with each deck for at least one week to decide, is it staying in my collection? Does it need more time before I can decide or is it going? So this one is absolutely staying for me. Um, I do like it. The only thing I don't like is the contents um all of the cards are not they're not in alphabetical order um there's no like numerical order because if they this is by category so you've got above below and liminal so every time i pick a card i have to look up the index to find what page it's on um in this one it's got themes questions affirmations practices i really do like this guidebook i think it's fantastic oops <laughs> oops a daisy um um, I'm not normally a fan of photo collage, but I like this one. It's moody, it's evocative, it's mystical. Um, I've had such a great time and I really do like The only thing I don't like with the cards is the shiny gilding because it's a bit sharp. But these backs are one of my favourites. I'm actually doing another video. I've already filmed it about the backs of cards, which I'll post soon. So that's a deep place. Another deck that I worked with this week is the energetics of color oracle i hate the backs of these i just think they're so dull compared to the, the fronts and the actual theme of the deck which is color so it's got the matte gold edges which i do like it's on a matte satin cardstock which is beautiful quite thick um i love this deck as soon as i got it this is one of the first decks i did a deck interview with and i loved the interview i thought it was fantastic even though, like I said, normally I'm not a fan of photos of real people. For some reason with this one, I don't mind at all. Um, sometimes there are exceptions to the rules, but I do adore it. Um, this one is in alphabetical order, full colour, so it's a beautiful, beautiful guidebook. Um, you've got the picture, you've got like a paragraph, you've got physical, emotional, mental, spiritual uh, areas. 
messages and an affirmation. So this, and it's also a lot of information about um, using color and how to use this. This deck, which is great. So this is absolutely 100% staying in my collection. And the fourth deck that I use this week is, just get it out of its little cozy, Alana Fairchild Sacred Rebels. Beautiful. I edged mine in red. These are quite large. Um, they are a satin cardstock. They're the typical Blue Angel. I don't know if they've changed their cardstock, but all the decks I have from them are the same. Um, the guidebook is very extensive. Alana writes a lot. And each one ends with a um, healing process. So this is this one's quite in-depth. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely... I had a few Alana decks i did not keep them all this one i kept because i liked the theme uh, it's guidance for living a unique and authentic life that's the theme um, it's also very creativity focused i like generally almost all of the um, imagery i do like the card names titles themes um, and i like the guidebook so this one I kept. I don't feel the need for any other Alana Fairchild decks at the moment. I tried them all out. This is the only one that I was like, I felt like they were all very similar and you only need one. That's how I felt personally. So this is the one that I chose to keep and um, I will be keeping this deck. So all of the decks that I worked with this week, I am definitely keeping in my collection. So I'll do a little spread. Okay, so um, I'm doing the Diamond Clarity Tarot Spread, which I'll put a picture up above there. So I shuffled, and these are the cards I got for each position, and I thought while I read the card, I'll uh, flip through the deck. So the first position was, what do I need to know? And I got Four of Cups, so I'll read Four of Cups. Dissatisfaction and an unwillingness to see what is offered. The figure sits motionless in a state of disrepair, discontentment and dissatisfaction. The three cups on her left represent blessings received and enjoyed. But as their novelty wore off, they grew underappreciated and taken for granted. A fourth cup, the contents of which are unknown, is being handed to her from the great mystery. She has distanced herself from the cares of the material world and retreated into the realm of the unconscious. In doing so, she's also created distance between herself and the messages of her own heart, remaining idle in a state of suffering. One look at her expression and we imagine her ruminating on the past, her wounds and all that she does not have. She appears to have experienced a serious trauma that fractured her psyche, illustrated by the mirrored face she's holding but not seeing. The wounds in her flesh have not properly tended to and remain dangerously open despite her holding just the right tools to facilitate healing. There is a folk story about a man and his dog sitting together on a porch. Under the hot sun, the man drinks his lemonade while the dog beside him howls in pain. A bystander, curious as to what the matter with this poor creature, approaches and asks the man, why is his dog howling? The man responds, responds with, ah, he's just sitting on a nail. The bystander is perplexed by this and asks, it sounds like it hurts. Why doesn't the dog just get up and move? The man considers his question and responds simply, I guess it just doesn't hurt badly enough. This story perfectly illustrates just what we will endure before taking the step to change our circumstances. Even if we are stuck in a powerless position, it is important to remember that solutions and help abound. We need only summon the courage to look beyond our current mindset in order to recognize it. The hand emerging from the clouds could be offering spiritual or physical assistance an opportunity, perhaps it is the same cup from the Ace of Cups offering a fresh new perspective. In our pain or hopelessness, we may not see this mysterious offer, being too wrapped up in a story of suffering, or more tragically, perhaps we do see it, but flat out reject it and potentially miss a chance for healing. Divinatory message. When the Four of Cups appears in your reading, you may want to ask yourself if you're willing to step beyond your dissatisfaction to consider what the Fourth Cup might hold. The three cups could represent the dissolution of a relationship, but in a fourth cup, a special friendship remains. 
The three cups could be the loss of a job, but the fourth cup, the gift of free time to pursue a dream. Whatever the circumstances within the cups, we must make the effort to inquire into what is being offered. To ask ourselves if we are more comfortable with our pain than with the effort and risk required to change it. There is still time to find healing and salvage the blessings contained in the cups. But in order to see them, action is necessary. The key words were self-absorption, apathy, disillusionment, and boredom. Okay, so I'll just leave it there. And then the next question was, what must I embrace? And I got royal blue with gratitude. I'll read that while I flip through. Your life is a great journey. Learn to respect your obstacles as if they are gifts from heaven, because that's exactly what they are. Physical. Releasing restrictions and overcoming physical roadblocks. Emotional. Going with the flow and picking up on subtle cues that are pouring, pointing you in the right direction. Mental. Letting go of all distractions. Spiritual. Embracing the challenges. Affirmation. I accept my challenges and choose to receive their wisdom and love. I'll just leave it on my card. Oops, that's too many. Mistake. I actually want to choose one that I like the look of. Oh, I've been getting this card so many times. It's a stalker card. I'll leave it on the stalker card. I might as well. Okay, and the next one I got, what must I avoid? And I got Echo. So I'll just go to that page. Echo. We live in the echoes and reverberations of what came before. The resonance of aliveness happening around us. The echoes remind us that we live in a dynamic relationship with the world around us. We're not isolated, disconnected happenings. Our voices and our energies continue to move through the world, making contact with what surrounds us and bouncing off surfaces to travel forward in a new way. What we touch and what we say and what we create matters. It carries on. Our handprints are everywhere. In all we do, we touch the world. The themes are impact, influence, resonance and connection. Questions to ask yourself. What does resonance feel like to you? How can you tell if you're resonating with someone or something? What feels resonant today? How does your energy echo through the world? What's the impact and reverberation you bring and how much you honor and celebrate that? Affirmations. My presence in the world matters. The, brute, the beauty I bring lives on. I'm connected to the world in beautiful ways. We all sing together. Practices. Think of a choice you made in the past that shaped who you are today in a positive way. How did that echo unfold over time? Think of a time when your past self felt lost. Imagine going back in time to offer some words of hope and encouragement as an echo from the future. Oh, I'll just leave it. So that's that one. And then in the fourth one, I got where to go from here. And I got inner trust. Though it may be cloaked and hidden, Within you lies natural magnificence, vibrancy, and true uniqueness. The harder this is for you to believe, the more growth this oracle is offering you now. Your opportunity for growth lies in letting go of the need to hide yourself from the world and to let go of any doubt about the wonder of what lies within you. This oracle brings you the message that it's time for you to trust yourself and let the real inner you out from behind the veil. You're being assured that you can trust your intuition and your own sense of things. Sometimes what you sense will be love and you will open your heart to move easily towards the source of that love, be it in the form of another person, a new career, path, project that you care about and want to pursue, or a spiritual creative practice that you are keen to explore. Sometimes you will sense, you sense what you sense will be more challenging than this and will ask something different of you. It might be that you sense fear and sabotage lurking within someone's intentions or in the situations around you. The Oracle asks you to trust yourself to find the most authentic and self-loving way to deal with that. Perhaps you've drawn this card because you are unnecessarily holding yourself back out of fear or a lack of belief in your ability to support and care for yourself or the importance of your need for self-expression in your relationships. The Oracle of Inner Trust comes to you with this guidance. You know what you are doing. You have enough wisdom and intuition to be able to place yourself more fully in the world, to take steps to unhide yourself. Even if you feel you have no clue about what is happening at a broader level in your life, 
even if you can't see the whole picture of what is taking place within or around you, you will still have all the wisdom and intuitive ability you need to take one step at a time and navigate your way through absolutely anything that life brings to your door. If you've been thinking of taking a leap of faith and doing things differently, whether in your personal life or creative work, then this oracle brings a particular message to trust your instincts and go for it. This oracle comes at a time when the patterns of your life are shifting. You can take advantage of this shift and leap into an entirely new level of consciousness and experience. This is not the time for self-doubt or playing small. It's time to get in touch with the courage, boldness and daredevil within, to take that step, big or small, into the future that is beckoning you forward. You have the wings to fly. Sometimes we don't realise it until we leap over the edge of what we have known and begin to soar into a new life. Healing process. Oh, I love this card. It's so pretty. Place your hands on your heart and say aloud or think, I trust in the love of my heart. Place your hands on your belly and say or think, I trust in the flow of life. Say the following aloud. I trust myself. I trust in my higher self. I trust in life. When I don't know, my higher self does know. I am guided by the wise voice of my higher self within my heart. I trust myself and I allow myself to be guided in all things by the wise instinctive knowing within. I am not afraid to be seen. I am veil myself from my hiding places and step by step I show myself with all my unique beauty to the world. I am seen and I am received with love. By myself and by others, I am worthy. So um, that was the deck. I'm just going to see if I can find something a bit more purple in it to go with the others. And I've probably just made it worse by trying to find one. But um, I thought they all worked really beautifully together. I like the aesthetics of them all together. Um, I thought, yeah, I thought the messages were quite, were pretty congruent. Um, I've just gone back to the original one I had. Um, and yeah, I, I really had fun this week. I thought it was a blast. I love all of these decks. It's nice when you just really love all of your decks and that's why I'm doing this, going through them one by one so that I can have all decks that I love. But um, that's everything for the decks that I worked with this week. I hope you're having an excellent morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And as always, stay.